What's going on you guys? This is Michael from Movement of Michael here with a review of the Panasonic G85. What I loved about it and why I got rid of it and why you probably shouldn't. Um, so the Panasonic G85 was kind of all the hype when it came to 4K mirrorless cameras on a budget. It was kind of in that intermediate range of people really trying to uh, step into the filmmaking world, up and comers, um, but I also know a lot of people that used it on professional shoots. I loved a lot of things about it. I really loved the in-body image stabilization. It was clean. I loved the clean 4K you got out of it. I loved a lot of the features, like the in-camera time-lapse, the non-stop recording, which was great for interviews since I do some documentary work. So I really loved a lot of things about this camera. I used it as a B cam with the GH5 for a couple weddings. I used it as an A cam on one of the weddings just to see what I could do with it. I took it with me on a shoot uh, for a documentary I did down in Costa Rica, uh, mainly for the interview section of where I could just leave that thing running for 30, 40 minutes and not worry about it um, stopping and having to restart it. And so. That was really nice. However, I ended up selling it for the uh, Sony a6500. And these two cameras have been compared side by side in tons of videos where you can see all the specs and the differences between the two. So this is more of a personal reason why I got rid of it. Yeah, one thing I always suggest is that before you ever buy a camera, to write out your needs for what's the highest priority for you. Is 4K really the highest priority? Do you need good low light performance? Do you need good autofocus? And, and kind of list out your needs based off of what you shoot and the Panasonic G85 just didn't fit my needs as an independent filmmaker who shoots a lot of weddings and documentary work etc. So reason number one, autofocus. Um, I shoot a lot of manual stuff if I'm behind the camera. However, for interviews and for gimbal work, I don't like to worry about if I'm in focus or not, if my subject's in focus when I set the camera aside for an interview. A lot of the time my subject would be moving around and a lot of focus hunting was going on and that was kind of annoying. And on top of that gimbal work, I'd be moving in on a subject and it was just focus hunting the entire time. And so I think that if you're using autofocus and you want reliable autofocus, the G85 will let you down. Reason number two, low light. Yeah, I shoot a lot of weddings and so it was just completely unpredictable lighting in every, every venue. Like I don't always get the chance to go in and set up a bunch of LED panels everywhere and make sure I have perfect lighting. And I need something that's more reliable and low light than that. Reason number three is dynamic range. I like to do a lot of different styles of color grading. Um, each film has a different look for me. I'm not a big fan of the Panasonic color science. I wasn't a huge fan of Cinelike D. I thought it lost a lot of information. I thought it lost a lot of the detail and the color. So what I did was I took the natural profile setting, put the natural setting on, and I just bumped down the contrast, bumped down the saturation, the sharpening and all that. And I got a pretty flat image, however, still wasn't what I needed for a lot of the shoots I do, for a lot of my style. So I ended up deciding to give Sony another go, and I got the a6500. So start off, the downsides of the Sony, what I sacrificed was battery life. Like yeah, this is a pain, and I have to use like six batteries just to shoot an entire wedding. But you gotta work with what you got. I think that this is something that I can look past and work with. I love the autofocus system on the camera. I would say it is 99% of the time on focus for me. I've yet to run into any major problems like I did with the G85. So I love it. So it's pretty reliable. I can, I can almost always guarantee I'm in focus. So I love that. Um, I really love the dynamic range. I think that S-Log2 and Cine4 are great. They capture a lot of dynamic range. I'm not a big fan of S-Log3. A lot of people are getting great results out of it. A lot of people love it. I kind of stick to S-Log2 if I'm planning on having a decent amount of color grading or uh, Cine4 if I don't want a ton and still want a good looking image. Yeah, I still run into some issues with skin tones and, and just having to grade to get the skin tones to look like they did when I was shooting Canon, but um, I think, again, that just requires some skill with grading. Reason number three, the portability. I think that, yeah, the G85 was also very portable. This isn't to say that it wasn't, but the Sony a6500 is more portable. So when I'm backpacking and, and going through different countries and stuff, and Having a camera this small doesn't look too suspicious. It doesn't stand out. When I'm interviewing people in the streets or shooting things that I want to be really raw emotions and candid stuff, people aren't really too intimidated by it. It's easy to kind of blend in and not really stand out. And so that was a huge benefit for me. I really love the lens options I have with this. This has become one of my favorite lenses. It's the Rokinon 35 millimeter f1.4. This thing has no electronics, it's all manual. It's super cheap and it is beautiful. I think it's a great lens. Throw on the Sony, it's been my favorite combo right now when I'm not having to use autofocus. Something else I really love about this camera is the low light performance. Yes, if you were to throw faster glass on your G85, you would have pretty great low light. 
um, but it wasn't what I needed, especially in weddings and low light situations for dock work. I really love that I can push the Sony a6500 more in low light. And so these are just a few of the personal reasons why I got rid of the G85. Again, I think it's a great camera. Yeah, I think that the Sony just captures color better. I think that it does better in low light. I think it just fits my needs better as a independent filmmaker who does a lot of dock work and a lot of action sports stuff. The other major reason that I switched from the G85 is because I'm a hybrid shooter. Yeah, I think that the Sony a6500 is just a better hybrid camera overall. This thing is a powerhouse packed into a small package for videographers and photographers. I think that I might eventually move on to something a little more upscale than the Sony a6500. I might go up to the Sony a7R 3 or this a7S Mark II. However, I wanted to get my foot in the Sony water before I ended up investing a ton of money into the G Master lenses. And these are just a few of the reasons why I decided to make the jump from Panasonic to Sony. And honestly, I don't think I could have made a better decision for me. At the end of the day, the best camera is the one in your hands. Whether you've got a Canon, a Sony, or Panasonic, you can make great content. However, you gotta get something that fits your needs. And the G85 did not fit my needs. So I hope this video helped. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Cheers.